Nice to see you, Bats. <clears throat> A giant coin. Heads or tails, dynamic duo. You'd better save your mare before his luck leaves him flat. Heads. Tails. What's it gonna be, Batman? Watch the good side. Get him, boys. Heads. Let's flip again, boys. No! My coin! Where is it? I've gotta find my lucky coin! No! No! My coin! Where is my coin? I have to find it! I have to! Looks like the odds were in our favor this time, eh, Batman? The odds never favor a life of crime, Robin. Eventually, the big house always wins. <laughs> Thank you, Batman, for saving my life. Uh -huh. Not a problem there. Now the Two-Face has been apprehended, we can get him back to Arkham for rehabilitation. Behind the scars, I know Harvey still has the potential for good. Arkham can't hold me, Dark Knight. Eventually, I'll get out. And when you do, Harvey, I'll be waiting. Stop right there. What a rock! No wonder there was a break in. It's the Siamese diamond, on loan to the museum from Thailand for the Dangerous Cats exhibit. That explains its new owner. Legend has it that the diamond grants unlimited power to whoever unlocks it by speaking the proper incantation. But that's just a legend, right? Hurry, Robin. We can't let him get away. Him? Don't you mean her? Since when do statues walk? Or, or attack, for that matter? They're statues of Bast, the ancient Egyptian goddess of the sun. Looks like a giant cat to me. Catman must have figured out how to unlock the abilities of the diamond. How do you know the thief was Catman? It was pretty dark. For all we know, it could have been Catwoman. This isn't like her. But I know what I saw. A museum heist involving cats and diamonds? Yeah, that doesn't sound like her at all. Great! We're trapped like a couple of- Don't say it. Any ideas? These walls don't appear to be reinforced. We should be able to use this statue to break through to the next room. It had to be a cat, didn't it? Enough chatter. Help me knock it over. Reptiles and birds. Definitely Catwoman. I'd recognize those moves anywhere. I'm not having this discussion right now. Modern cat spends most of its time sleeping on couches, playing with yarn, and coughing up fur balls. They also enjoy having their tummies rubbed. I don't see what's so scientific about that. Scientists predict that by the year 3000, cats will develop their own space technology and fly to the moon. There, they'll fight aliens with laser blasters and explore the planets looking for new life forms and adventure. Hammers of justice! Okay, now that's just ridiculous. We're not here for a history lesson, Robin. I know, but the guy said... Keep your eyes peeled for any threats. Uh, found one! All I'm saying is it was dark, and we shouldn't jump to conclusions. Catman broke out of Blackgate three days ago. Do you think that's a coincidence? And Catwoman's been on the loose for almost a year! You're always defending her. I just believe in criminal rehabilitation. For the hot ones, maybe. Careful on these elevators, Robin. They have the potential to flatten both of us. I've ridden on elevators before, thanks. From the outside. 
Why does it feel like we're going in circles? There are more direct routes out of this museum. It's obvious Catman is leading us into some kind of trap. I'm still not convinced it's him. Either way, watch your step. Looks like they've got cameras all over this place, huh? The museum does house over a billion dollars worth of priceless artifacts. Too bad their windows aren't thicker. We should be able to use these monitors to find Catman's current location. Look, there she is! I mean, he is! Whatever! He's heading towards the upper floor. If we hurry, we can cut him off. This attraction is the most direct route to where Catman was last seen heading. Call it a shortcut. Can't we just run along the tracks then? This thing moves way too slow. The ground is electrified, but you're welcome to try if you think your boots are thick enough. Never mind. Say for a minute we're actually following Catwoman. It's not her, Robin. I'm not saying it is Catwoman, just that it could be her. Shouldn't we keep an open mind about the thief's identity until we know for sure? Right now, our priority is capturing this thief. It doesn't matter whether it's Catman, Catwoman, Penguin, or Killer Moth. Someone stole that diamond, and we're gonna get it back. You're the boss. Hold it! So much for cutting him off. We can't let him get away. You've seen what that diamond can do. We need to get it back before it's used against the entire city. Watch your footing, Robin. This glass should support our weight, as long as we don't make any sudden moves. Sudden? We're in the middle of a pursuit here. I don't suppose it'll support all three of us? Hey, it's the Batman. And that bird boy. Out of curiosity, who's your boss again? See, Batman and I sort of have a bet about... Let's focus on taking them down, Robin. Right, got it. Zip line. Check. Hey, who turned out the lights? Hear that? It's the Batman. And Robin. Come on, guys, keep up. Don't let them out of here alive. Boy, you guys sure are confident, huh? I feel like maybe we should avoid these glass ceilings. Just a hunch. Do you know where Catman's headed? Because if so, then by all means, let's head straight there. Well, no, I don't. Then try to keep up. If he gets away, it'll have disastrous consequences for Gotham City. You're right. Oh, and try not to break the ceiling this time. Me? It was him that broke it before. I, I mean her. You know, those thugs probably could have told us who their boss was. Why are you pushing this issue? You've never questioned my judgment on a felon before. It's just, you know, because it's her. What's that supposed to mean? Look, it's no secret you have a thing for her. Don't be ridiculous. Catwoman is an escaped convict. My only interest is in returning her to Blackgate. Hey, love takes all forms. Just because someone's a violent criminal... She's not violent. Ha! See? You're defending her! What is this? A yarn factory? One of Gotham's oldest. They don't keep the place very tidy. It's likely that Catman turned the workers into cats on his way through. And everyone knows that no cat can resist the urge to play with a big ball of yarn. I guess that makes sense. Keep your eyes peeled. This is exactly the kind of place Catman would spring a trap. Uh, Batman? Remember that trap you mentioned? Time to run. Why would they even have a huge ball of yarn like that? I'm not sure, but unless we move fast, we're about to become part of the world's biggest cat toy. Boy, whoever thought a ball of yarn could be so deadly? Remind me to never take up knitting. We're lucky the ball knocked over that water tower so we could reach the other side. Let's hope there are no giant fur balls waiting to be coughed up on us when we get there. This rigging looks unstable, Robin. What's your footing? We're pretty high up now, huh? Yes, and it looks like Catman may have finally cornered himself. There are no other buildings adjacent to this one. And it's time to reveal our mystery cat burglar. A cat helicopter? Where do they buy these things? Robin, look out! Hold on, Robin, I've got you. Really? I was a cat? 
Like a little house cat? The diamond has the power to bring feline-related artifacts to life and to turn humans into cats. Who knows what else it's capable of? Was I cute? I was able to develop an antidote. It won't prevent us from being turned into cats, but it should reverse the effects of the diamond within a few seconds. So why are we at the zoo? I found particles in my cable that trace back to a particular concrete used here. Yes, my furry feline friends, your day has finally come. Soon the whole city'll be your milk bowl. The only thing you'll be lapping up is a hot bowl of justice, Catman. Huh. What do you know? It was him. The dynamic duo! I thought I dealt with you back at the museum. <laughs> you must have as many lives as these cats. What's your game, Catman? Oh, I'm purely in it for the kitties. They've been enslaved by humanity far too long, forced to sleep on couches and squat in litter boxes instead of running free. It's time they take their city back. Of course, if the resulting chaos allows me to loot the city for a few million dollars, even better. Big surprise. It always comes down to money with you. It does make the world go round, Batman. But I'm afraid this is the last stop for you and your chirpy companion. Is that supposed to be a Robin joke? I guess all the empty cages- It's time for a feeding, my curious companions. Sharpen those teeth! We're dining on heroes tonight! Kitty, kitty, kitty. What, what are you doing? B bad kitty, bad down, no, get off me. <laughs> Time to retreat to higher ground. You kitty, kitty, kitty. You kitty, kitty, kitty. First a robin, now a house cat. <laughs> Make up your mind. I, I told you, get off me! <laughs> Attack my gargantuan gato. Yes, yes, don't let them get away. Tear these heroes into pieces. Maybe next time, you won't be so quick to judge. I guess I was wrong, but how did you know Catman was behind everything and not Catwoman? It was obvious. If you looked at how... Thanks, boys. I wish I could stick around, but this kitty's got a scat. Obvious, huh? Be careful, Robin. She's leading us. There's bound to be traps ahead. Well, duh. Nice outfit, kitty. Huh. Come on, boys. It's time to make the boss lady proud. This place doesn't look too stable. It appears that Catman and Catwoman have already started tearing the city apart. What's with all the house cats? Citizens, Robin. They're using the diamond to turn anyone they encounter into four-legged felines. I'd better watch where I step, then. For a pair of flying rodents, you two sure had trouble getting up here. A robin is not a rodent. Give it up, Catwoman. You're better than this. Are you going to cuff me, Dark Knight? 
Well, come on up then. So Catman and Catwoman were working together the whole time. Evidently. While Catman preoccupied us with his diamond heist, Catwoman was already setting her plan in motion here in the city. You know it was probably all her idea, right? No more jumping to conclusions, Robin. We'll let the police sort that out once we've apprehended both of them. It's her! What do you hope to get out of this, Catwoman? What does any girl want? Jewels, money, gold, the world... Turning Gotham civilians into cats is a twisted game. Yeah, and enough with the bombs already. This place looks like it's made out of Swiss cheese. How about just one more? For old time's sake. I can't believe they'd be willing to destroy an entire city just for some money. With Catwoman, it's always more about the game than the prize. Catman's just greedy, but Catwoman does this for the thrill. Can't she just ride a roller coaster like the rest of us? There is good in her, though. I've seen it. She can be rehabilitated. Here we go again. See ya, boys. Boy, it feels like a building just came down on my head. How long have we been out? Uh, around two hours. I can only imagine the mayhem Catman and Catwoman have been causing in our absence. We need to stop them. Let's start with finding a way out of here. We need to get out of this sewer and back on the streets. I'm sick of climbing pipes. Not so fast. Catman and Catwoman think we're dead right now. We can use that to our advantage to sneak up on them when their defenses are down. Smart thinking. So where do we go from here? By now, they must have goons all over the city. Let's keep quiet and see if we can pick up any info on their current whereabouts. Thanks for the workout. Up ahead, listen. I hate the sewer. It smells like my toilet down here. And I never clean my toilet. Relax. The boss just wants us to make sure Batman and Bird Boy didn't survive the explosion. You saw that thing. The only one's crawling out of that wreckage are the cockroaches. You sure about that? Get him! Who's that? Officer McDowell. It looks like he's been knocked unconscious. At least he's not a cat. Calling all units in the vicinity. Catman last seen attacking Gotham's nuclear power plants. Structural damage has occurred, and it's believed there may be some radiation leakage as a result of the attack. Avoid this area. Sounds pretty crazy out there. Once we get our hands on Catman and Catwoman, we can use my antidote to reverse the effects of the diamond on Gotham citizens. Let's hope we live that long. I hear something above us. Oh yeah, tons of cash. Once the bosses have finished taking over the city, we're all gonna be rolling in the dough. Yeah, if Batman doesn't stop them first. And Robin. Quiet. Hey, you hear something? Probably just rats. Anyway, how can they take over the whole city? Even without Batman, they still gotta deal with the cops. That's the best part. They're hitting the cops first. Half the police force has already turned into cats. Too bad they didn't have a pig-shaped diamond, huh? Should we take them out or leave them? That's up to you, Robin. Nice one. Catwoman's gone too far this time. What clued you in? When she looted the city? Or when she blew everything up? I didn't believe she was capable of something like this. Maybe you don't know her as well as you think you do, Batman. Let's go. We have to reach Gordon before they do. We're too late. Maybe not. Hey, look! It's the Batman! See, I told you guys he was still... Save the speech, Whiskers. We already heard it. Anyone that doesn't want to get clobbered should clear out now. Hey, it's that bird guy. What's his name? Sparrow? That's it. Time for a cat fight. It's Worthington Gordon in the flash. 
or rather, fur. So now we have no idea where they are. According to these files on Gordon's desk, we do. Where? They've stolen millions in cash and jewels from banks all over town. Now all they need is Gotham's most expensive home to enjoy their spoils in. You can't be serious. We're off to Way Manor. Alfred picked a heck of a time to visit Bermuda. It'll take him months to clean up this mess. I see more thugs up ahead. Be discreet in taking them down. We don't want to alert Catwoman or Catman yet. That's going to be a little difficult, seeing how there's no place to hide around here. You're forgetting whose home this is, Robin. I have hidden passages all over this lawn. Really? Why didn't I know about this? Because Wayne Manor's never been invaded by greedy villains and cat thugs before. Such incredible power! With one shiny rock, we were able to bring an entire city to its knees! Or should I say, its hind legs? Hmm, say whatever you want, Catman. Just say it a little quieter. I'm getting sick of the theatrics. Oh, what a wonderful pair you and I make. With this diamond, we can take over the world together. From Gotham City to Katmandu. And, uh, you? <laughs> King and queen, lion and lioness. Keep your tail down, Catboy. This was a one-time team-up. Oh, don't fight it, Catwoman. You couldn't dream up a more perfect specimen of man than the one and only Catman! Oh, I can think of one, but he's gone now. Batman! Always Batman! And Robin! Go on, Catman. It's time to protect your queen. Better egg. Nighty night, Batman. I'll see you in your dreams. Traps everywhere. Where's a girl safe anymore? You won't be so lucky this time! I'll protect you, Catwoman! Come now, Batman. You can't blame a girl for being financially ambitious. I won't have to, Catwoman. We have an entire justice system for that. All done. I guess we were both right this time, huh? No one's right when jumping to conclusions, Robin. <clears throat> I guess so. Come on. Let's get that diamond back to the museum before it causes any more trouble. We're installing them tomorrow. These new cells will be absolutely escape-proof. It does appear that you put Gotham's tax dollars to good. Sweet release. Is that Copperhead? Apparently. Why would he try to escape with us standing right here? At least it saves us the trip of dragging him back here. Ah, superheroes. Oh dear, he's gotten out again. Would you two mind? Not at all. Uh, hey, Snakey? Probably not the smartest idea breaking out right in front of us. How about you slither back into that cage of yours like a good little reptile? How about I snap your spine instead? Boy, it must be tough to keep thinking up S-words. Let's just get him back in his cell so we can leave, Beetle. Wait, one second. I want to try something. Hey, Copperhead, I heard you're a big dumb idiot. Is that true? Absolutely false. <laughs> now see, I thought he was going to say yes, because you know of the S in there at the end? Yeah, he's good. Enough silliness. It's time to skin this snake. That was still pretty silly. It's time to strike. Surprise! Release me! Have some confidence. Surprise! Suffering! Stay! The heroes are victorious! 
victorious. No prison cell can hold my slithering physique. Obviously, you haven't heard about the prison's new upgrades yet. Upgrades? Hey, Batman, after we get his costume off, can I make a pair of cowboy boots with it? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, I know, it's Batman's. So, you want to go grab a burger after this? Justice never takes a break, even for fast food. Yeah, I figured you'd say something like that. Anyway, the prison's safe now. Another criminal thwarted, thanks to Batman and the blue... Hey, wait up! It's totally my fault! Ah, why am I such an idiot? Calm down. If I hadn't opened my big trap, then Grodd wouldn't even know about Science Island. Now he does and he's gonna take it over, all because of what I said. I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Well... You call these weapons, Grodd? You should see the technology on Science Island! <laughs> It makes you and your monkeys look practically prehistoric! Okay, that's pretty bad. Our plan is to infiltrate the Blue Beetle complex, hopefully before Grodd and his soldiers have reached it themselves. I know a secret entrance, so we should have an easier time getting in than they will. Once we're in, we need to... Jaime, are you listening? What? Yeah, I mean... I just feel like such a loudmouth. This isn't like some other crime where we just show up to save the day. We're here to clean up my mess. That's right, so stay focused and listen to my plan. Once we're inside, we can take control of the complex and enable its defenses. Whoa! What is that thing? It's huge! Looks like an official licensed Batman trash can. Frodo looks like a trash can? Oh, he can talk? I mean, uh, hey, buddy, you know, sorry about that. I didn't mean the whole trash can comment. More like a dumpster, if anything. Or a tank! Yeah, tank is much better. Proto likes tanks! This is Protobot. He's one of the sentient armored robots I have developed. I can tell. He has your ears. Proto, I'd like you to stay here and guard the Batjet. We'll call you if we need any backup. That sounds great, Batman. Proto will wait here until you call me. Ooh! Is this a beach? Let's get going. With any luck, Grodd hasn't reached the complex yet. And even if he has, it'll still take him some time to get inside. Man, that protobot guy is huge. I bet he could just sit on Grodd. Splat! No more monkey troubles. Jaime, stay focused. Right, focused. I can do that. Why, do I seem unfocused to you? Hey, do you think they have coconuts on this island? Ah. <sighs> they never learn. Gorillas, up ahead. You don't need to tell me. I smelled them 20 feet back. Grodd's leaving some of his soldiers behind. He's obviously anticipating us following him. Maybe they got lost. You know, primates aren't the smartest animals, you know. Actually, they are. Come on, we need to take them out before they can radio in. I was just joking. About the smart animal thing. I mean, of course I knew that. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll take the one on the left. So what's the deal with Protobot? I just told you. Oh, I mean, he doesn't talk like your typical robot. Proto was the first in his series of defensive robots I created. In some ways, he's less advanced than the later models. But he also ended up being a great friend. I get you. You know, I wanted a robot for a best friend, too. Of course, I was seven at the time. You sure you don't want to bring him along? I mean, maybe we could be his backup. Right now, the name of the game is Stealth. That's one area Proto doesn't excel at. I can imagine. We're going pretty far. You sure you don't want to hop back in your jet and land a little closer? I'm sure the complex is a landing strip, right? Right now, Grodd has no idea we're on this island. The last thing I want to do is alert him and turn this into a race. I, I could fly us there, right, Scarab? I've seen you fly. We would be quieter taking the jet. Oh, yeah. Raise the bowl. All right, send in the robot cavalry. Blue Beetles represent. Go! 
No, blue! Can you try not to embarrass us for five minutes? Hey, wait, are those things going to attack us next? We've been here before, remember, Jaime? That's right, these robots were built by Ted Kord, the original Blue Beetle. Your predecessor. So let them do their thing, and we'll do ours. Their thing looks a lot cooler. You're pretty cool too, Scarab. It must be annoying hopping between those rocks, Batman. You sure you don't want me to fly us the rest of the way there? I bet I could get us there in five minutes flat. Well, maybe ten. Actually, which way are we headed again? I'll stick with the rocks, thanks. So what happens when we get there? We knock on the front door? Check under the mat for a key? Like I said, I know a few secret entrances into the compound. Rod shouldn't have any idea about them, and it'll take him a while to get in through the front gate. Right, right. Uh, I don't suppose we pass one of these secret doorways already? Like a shortcut so we can get off these rocks? I said secret entrance, Jaime, not secret tunnel. Gotcha. Arm and asking, right? Time to head upward. Well, since you don't want my help, would you mind if I rode on your back? My wings are getting a little tired with all this flying over every obstacle. Was that a joke? Sort of. Don't quit your day job. Hey. I guess you think I'm a pretty bad superhero for letting Grodd know about this place. You're not a bad hero, but you could learn to keep quiet once in a while. Right. Good advice. Good advice. I'm actually really good at staying quiet. Not a lot of people know that about me. There was this one time a couple years ago, my, maybe like six or eight months ago, I didn't talk for like a whole hour, like an entire hour. It's just crazy, right? I may. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. Sorry. All right. Looks very secret entrancey. You got the key? In a matter of speaking. I brought along a device that the last Blue Beetle gave me. It should open most sealed areas in the complex. That's handy. It also packs quite a punch against robots. So, you two must have been pretty close, what with him giving you the spare key to his place and all. He was one of the greatest heroes I've ever known. And a good friend. Oh. You're pretty good too. This will slow him down. So how do we know if Grodd's gotten inside yet? Keep an eye out for signs. You mean like banana peels? Tree branches? Issues of popular Gorilla Monthly? More like piles of wreckage and debris. Grodd and his gorillas aren't very subtle. Check. We should keep a lookout for banana peels too, though. Be my guest. See? Banana peel! Called it! Ape alert. I found some wreckage. You were right. I guess they beat us inside. It certainly appears so. We should be able to bust right through this. We could tidy up later. More wreckage. I got this one, Batman. Step aside and watch these pistons do their thing. Ready, Scarab? The wreckage is too thick. All you'll do is let everyone know where we are. Let's find another way. Are you sure? Because I think I can... Come on. What if I'm really quiet? Just one piston? I've seen your pistons. They're not quiet. Why is Grodd so obsessed with technology anyway? He's a criminal mastermind who rules his city based on the idea that he's the smartest one in it. Technology equals intelligence in his eyes. That, and he likes shiny things. So Grodd's some kind of super genius, right? The talking didn't give it away. And what about the rest of the apes? Are they super intelligent too? I mean, I've seen them use guns, but I've also seen them scratch their butts for 10 minutes. I wouldn't say genius, but all gorillas from Gorilla City possess an above average level of intelligence. What? <laughs> Gorilla City? That's where they live? What was the name, Monkey Town taken? <laughs> Monkey Town. <laughs> they're even smarter than some humans I know. Yeah, but if they're get. Hey! I got that, you know. Real funny. Elevator. Oh, nice to take a break from all the walking and fighting. Should we go up or down? We're on the ground floor, Jaime. I knew that. So, up then? <sighs> How does that thing work, anyway? It creates an electromagnetic pulse that's converted into waves, amplifying each other in a cyclical formation until the device reaches a critical mass. Ah, yes, of course, of course. I think I've got something like that. Here, let me try again. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, you know what? Maybe you should keep doing it. Good idea. Looks like we need to split up to get this thing open. You want to take high or low? I... You know what? Let me take high. I've got the wings. 
By the way, you think these wings look cool, right? I, you know, I was meaning to ask you, I was worried they might come off a little mm, fairy princess or something, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but if I'm gonna get my own action figure, I really need to start thinking about which... I may. Yeah? You need to start thinking about moving. Right. Way ahead of you, Batman. Well, way above you anyway. Let's go. Oh, this is such a cool place. I need a lair. Every good hero has one. You've got the Batcave somewhere, right? Yes. Well, you think the old Blue Beetle would mind if I set up shop here? Since we share the same name and all. I hear it's got a pretty bad gorilla infestation. Try to stay focused. I didn't mean now. It looks like they've breached hallways all over the complex. We need to get to the control room. It's what Grodd will be searching for. There's a control room? Why wasn't I told this? If we can get there before him, we can turn on the rest of the complex's security measures and put everything in a lockdown state. That should drive Grodd and his soldiers out of the complex. What happens if he gets there before us? Don't ask. Hey, can I ask you something? Hero question. Sure. How do you keep yourself from getting a wedgie in your costume? And this thing's always riding up on me and it's a little too snug in, you know, those delicate places. You know what I mean? I'm just used to wearing baggy clothes at school. My outfit is made out of armor plating and synthetic fibers, not a bug on my back. A bug that can hear everything you're saying, I might remind you. Oh, right. Sorry, buddy. No offense. Watch out for the electrified floor. Where? The one you're about to walk onto. Oh. Oh, right. Thanks for the heads up. I'll just not go down there then. Good plan. So before, when you said it would be a bad thing if Grodd beat us here, how bad were you thinking? Pretty bad. Really bad? As in, he now controls every robot in the complex. I was afraid of that. Ah, so the heroes have arrived. But let's continue our chat in a more comfortable setting. Ow! Lousy monkey. See, I can fly whenever I want, I just have to be ready to fly. That's the thing. Ah, much better. This is where the magic happens, I take it. Thank you for telling me about this place, Blue Beetle. Without you, I might have missed out on one of the world's technological treasures. Yeah? Well, don't get cozy, Grodd. Batman and I are here to kick you and your monkeys out on your shiny red butts. Oh, monkeys? Smooth, Jaime, but you're thinking of baboons. Oh, right. So I suppose you're gonna make these machines smash us now that you control them. Now why would I let the machines have all the fun? Ouch! Watch the scarab! Get smashed! Too powerful to defeat now. Just keep running and hopefully we can find a way out of here. Stop that! You're annoying me! pretty tough when he wants to be. I thought you two had fought before. Ah, uh, yeah, well, yes, in a bank for five minutes. And that was really more of a laser battle. Not to mention he and his monkey sort of cheated. You want to get technical about it. So Grodd got away. Well, yes, but I got the money back. Come on, let's get out of here. What we need to find now is a hard-lined computer terminal so I can download the schematics. Hey, I'm kind of like a computer terminal, right? You want me to zap you with this? Yeah, I'm going to go with a big no on that. Computer terminal. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> Not literally. Aw. Maybe we should go back to the control room. Grodd's too smart for that. Or smash the control room to pieces. Either way, being there won't help us gain control of the complex. So what we do for now is Hey! Calm down, little 
guys. We're on the same team. Check out the blue. Grodd set up the system to defend against us and protect him and his gorillas. Guess we lost our backup, huh? Let's try to avoid detection. We need to travel where Grodd can't monitor us. Service tunnels, wiring shafts. Bathroom. What? It's illegal to have cameras in there. I'm accessing the layout now. Once we have that, we can use it to locate the central core. Central core? Like an Apple core? Basically, the central core is a small data mainframe that runs everything in the complex. Then why the heck didn't we go there first? I was hoping we wouldn't have to. The device is about the size of a bowling ball. Anyone in possession of it has the ability to control any electrical object within a hundred feet. Really? That sounds wicked. Hey, do you suppose I could borrow that central core thing once we find it? There's this pinball machine that's really been kicking my butt on campus. Come on. Grodd's gorillas are below. Tread quietly. Grodd said if we see humans, we shoot them. Grodd said a lot of things. What if humans attack us first? Attack with what? We have the guns. But what if they have guns too? You stupid. Heroes don't have guns. They just talk and try to make villains give up. <laughs> Turn self in. Do right thing. <laughs> <laughs> you better than this. Me can help you. Sound like old buddies of yours. Not funny, Jaime. Have you ever noticed all these complexes are built like a video game? I think about it. I mean, we're walking down a hallway. Oh, there's a door. But you gotta hit those three switches to open it. Dead end. Guess we have to backtrack. Oh, look! A new passage opened up. Now we just... Hi, May. Yeah? This is not a video game. Now, please, try to stay focused and keep the chatter to a minimum. Focus. Minimum chatter. Press the B button. Got it. If Grodd finds the central core before we do, what's plan B? Finding the central core is plan B. So what if we can't- Don't think like that, Jaime. A hero has to stay optimistic. You can't just hope for the best outcome. You have to believe you can actually accomplish it. I can be optimistic. Um, the next time I see Grodd, I'm gonna drop a robot on him. See, totally optimistic. Good. The central core should be a few hundred meters ahead. We'll have to get past these electrical fields to reach it. And it will probably be well guarded. You know, we could have just called Robobot in here to get it for us. Protobot. Yeah, him. Robots probably love electrical fields. I bet it's like cheese puffs to them. All we get is a charred butt. Quit complaining, hero. We're almost there. If this place is so old, why does everything look so advanced? I've been wondering that since the last time I came here. The original Blue Beetle was way ahead of his time. He dreamt up technology that no one else would come up with for decades. Several of my gadgets are based on his designs. Cool. Of course, his greatest contributions to the world were the crimes he helped prevent. There are hundreds of people out there today living better lives because of Ted. Pretty big shoes to fill. Definitely. How would you, uh, say I'm doing so far? Ask me after we stop going. Right. The mission. Got it. Halt. Intruders. You do not have clearance. I think they found us. Please remain still until you are escorted away. All hail Grodd. I may. Yeah. You know those pistons you mentioned earlier? I call them Los Perros Grandes. Get ready to use them. On three. One. Two. Three! Finally. Well, let's crack this thing open and get out of here. I feel like a rat in a maze. I need to use Ted's gadget to remove its defenses. One moment. That should do it. Ooh, shiny! Thanks for the gift, Batman! Oh, come on! If this device does what you say it can, then it's worth more than this barren island. Assuming you can get out of this room with it. Pretty safe assumption. Grab on, we can't let Grodd get away. Hello! Do you not see the giant wings sticking out of my back? This is faster. Fine. This is like surfing. Oh, I can get into this. Don't let him get away. That device will allow Grodd to control any electrical device in the world, not just the ones on this island. I wasn't planning on it. Oh, you have to admit though, this totally seems like a level in some video game. Oh, Batman and Superman. Oh, 
unstoppable. Doesn't seem like we're gaining on him. We are. Just try to keep balanced and take out any gorillas that come your way. Take them out? I hardly know them. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll take care of them. Beware, criminals. For the entire ocean is my army. <laughs> Once again, evil is washed away. We should sell these things to kids. Huh. This is fun. This is way better than skateboarding or surfing. Plus, it shoots lasers. I may. No, seriously, I bet we make like a million bucks each. Don't you want to be rich? I need an arch enemy. Every good hero has an arch enemy that compliments him. I mean, what about Grodd? Does he have an arch enemy? Typically, the Flash takes care of Grodd. Flash? How does that make sense? Monkey versus speed? A good arch villain should be like an evil opposite version of the hero. Like Lex Luthor and Superman. Brains versus Ron. Or you and the Joker. I mean, he is so funny and you're, um... I'm what? You're totally awesome. Finally! Let's wrap this up so I can get home and catch up on my video games. We've got you now, you big dumb monkey. There's nowhere to run, Grodd. Hand over the device. Batman, you've returned. Proto is happy. Protobot, stay back. What an amazing piece of technology, Batman. Mind if I take him for a spin? Not good, right? Really not good. Proto, sorry, Batman. Sorry, he must kill you! System error? Your attacks are worthless. I feel nothing. I hope you learned a lesson about bragging, Blue Beetle. Believe me, I did. Next supervillain I fight, I'm keeping my mouth shut. But what about Grodd? He knows about this island now. He'll try this again. What's going on? Where am I? How did I get here? Well, that's convenient. Come on, let's take this monkey back to his cage in Blackgate. It's nearly midnight. Time to wind back the clock on Gotham's famous Dark Knight. What's this one's name again? Clock King. Does he always make puns about time? <laughs> like clockwork. Excuse me! I am talking here! Sorry, Clock King. We didn't mean to tick you off. Or grind your gears. <laughs> yes. Well, I... Hey! This is no time for the funny stuff! You should have seen the villains we had back when I was starting out. Now those were some classy foes. I'll bet. I have planted explosives all over the- You ever hear of the Metal Menace? Of course. Fifty foot tall robots with metal clamps for hands. They came from outer space, you know. Really? I can't believe they're not listening to me again. Explosives! All over Big Ben! And they will go off at the stroke of midnight, unless you... What about Brainwave? Oh, boy. I haven't thought about him in ages. His head must have been about three feet tall. I always got him and Dr. Savannah confused. You're not the only one, kid. Enough silliness! It is now time to die, heroes. You can catch up in the afterlife. I'll feed us in. Ready, Hawkman? I've been ready for 40 years, Batman. Let's go. Tick tock, tick tock. There isn't much time left until Big Ben is a pile of rocks.
gonna make it through my clockwork maze. Don't do that! Beware of falling gears, heroes. Let's see how you like this face! Time? Really? Run. Out. That was quite a workout. It's great to see you in action, Hawkman. You've been my hero ever since I was a kid. But this is the first time I've had the opportunity to team up with you, one-on-one. -on -one. Happy to help, kid. I'm just glad I was here in the area. And you're doing a real good job out there in Gotham City. Well, thanks. Come on. Let's get this hunk of junk back to the watch repair shop and call it a night. Well done, Dark Knight. It appears that Clock King's time has finally run out. Gentlemen, Ghost. Tut tut. No attempt to reason with me first. What are you doing in London? For the answer to that, Batman, you and your elderly acquaintance will have to follow me down the rabbit hole. Cheerio. It's obviously a trap. That's never stopped me before. Oh, do try to keep up, Batman. It would be a shame for your old winged friend to slow down our fun. He sure doesn't act like a gentleman. I wouldn't take anything James Craddock says to heart. He blames me for his unfortunate demise back in the year 1900. Ever since then, he's been trying to take his revenge. 1900? Time travel. I see. Well then, I'd hate to keep him waiting any longer. I can float more slowly if it would help. This is really more of a stroll than a chase. Don't worry about us, son. We can keep up just fine. Enough games, Craddock. We've already dealt with one crazy villain tonight. Of course you have. Who do you think hired him to lead you here? Whatever happened to respecting your elders? Maybe I should make some tea. If you two plan to keep me waiting like this... You sure you feel up to this? Listen, kid. I've defeated villains tougher than this guy in my sleep, with one hand tied behind my wings. Blindfolded! You said I was your hero? I'm about to show you how heroic I can get. All right, then. Somebody hit the lights. I'm likely to fly into a wall down here. It's the London Underground, one of England's transit systems. This station has been under construction for the past few months. Guess we won't be catching a train, then. Any idea why he'd lead us down here? Not yet, but I'm sure we'll find out. Pretty messy for construction. These cars have been ripped off the tracks, and the tracks appear to be mangled and torn. I'm guessing this is the work of your ghost friend? Most likely. Be ready to fly in case anything comes our way. His wings are always ready, my boy. You know, you were one of the reasons I decided to become a crime fighter. Really? Your work with the Justice Society inspired me as a kid. Well, thanks. What was it like fighting crime back in the Golden Age? It was... simpler back then. I miss the old villains, that's for sure. The ones you got these days, they're too crazy for me. They just as soon blow up an entire city as rob a bank. But you're still out there, fighting crime with the rest of the Justice Society. You're still teaching the rest of us newcomers how it's done. Darn straight I am. Now come on, let's not keep Mr. Monocle waiting. Getting tired, Craddock? 
Hardly a bad man. I just wanted to pop by and deliver both of you a present. And what present would that be, deadhead? I'll give you a hint. It has eight wheels, 40 seats, and is about to grind you both into mush. I thought you said the cars down here weren't running. They're not. These cars are being manipulated by Gentleman Ghost. That explains the spooky green glow. So it's safe to stand up, then? Not if you want to keep your head. Just because Craddock's controlling them doesn't mean they can't hurt us. Glad well, that's sorted. Let's keep moving. Be ready to dodge any time you hear a rumbling or see lights. I must admit, I'm surprised you two have kept up. Though I'm afraid this is the end of the line. See you on the other side, Batman. Not the most creative trap. <laughs> you two are nothing if not consistent. Sorry we missed your train, guy. We'll have to catch the next one. This sure doesn't look like a subway anymore. It's an old mine shaft. The London Underground must have been built on top of it. From what I can tell, it's at least 300 years old. Well, let's mine for some bad guys, then. <laughs> These support beams are rotted through. Careful where you step. Sure thing, kid. We're still not that far down. Maybe it would be better if you flew back to the surface to call for backup. You're a lot younger than me, Batman, but you've been doing this for a while. You know what it means to be a hero, right? Yes. And you know I can never leave a partner behind. Now come on, you're slowing us down. We gotta catch this guy while we can still see him. Actually, he glows in the dark. Well, that'll be useful, won't it? You really must be careful, Batman. This entire place is falling to pieces. Much like your companion there. The only thing falling to pieces is my patience for you, Ghost. Don't let him get to you, kid. That's just what these villains want. A real hero learns to dodge the insults along with the punches. You're right. Now let's find another way out of here. My wings are getting dusty. Well, this sure is nice. I'm glad to see not everything down here is broken. These elevators work on a system of weights and pulleys so they don't require electricity. Still, be prepared to jump in case the entire thing comes down. You worry about yourself, son. I'm the one with the wings, remember? Lava, huh? Well, at least we can see a little better now. My eyes were starting to bug me. This area must be even less stable than I thought if lava is leaking up through the ground. We should turn around and find another route. And let old Spooky get away? Come on, these rocks look sturdy to me. It's time to act like a hero, kid. Another dead end, huh? Maybe that gentleman ghost fella could lend us a map of this place. Oh, but that would spoil all the fun, wouldn't it? This isn't fun, Craddock. It's dangerous down here. Oh, I don't know, Batman. Your friend seems to be enjoying himself. Loving it, ghost. Why don't you hover a little closer? I'd like to introduce you to my spiked friend here. Oh, perhaps later. Right now, you two should worry about running. Running? Hurry! Back the way we came! Unless you've got your own pair of wings under there, it looks like we're stuck. I should be able to break those stalactites off the ceiling using my batarangs. They might create a path to jump across. Hey! That's using your noggin. Give it a shot! This should be a hoot. Just like one of those fancy metal roller coasters they've got nowadays. Ever been on one of those? Not recently. Next stop, Gentleman Ghost. We should check this card out before using it. We need to make sure it's safe. And let the bad guy get away? Come on, son. Where are your guts? We're superheroes. Some box on wheels isn't gonna do us in. We've gotta keep moving, so hop on in. See you next fall! Well, this place seems a little better. Sturdier, anyway. 
What do they call it? Judging by the architecture, it appears to be a preserved section of old London from the 13th or 14th century. Suddenly I don't feel so old anymore. I've heard rumors of sites like this, covered up in landslides and whatnot, while the rest of London continued developing above. While you're enjoying the architecture, keep in mind there's a maniac down here that wants us both dead. You're right. Let's keep moving. We need to find a way out of here. When I was six years old, I dressed as you for Halloween. Ah, with the wings and everything? Plastic ones, from the store, and a mask that was too big for my head. That's a kick. My father helped me make a mace out of cardboard and masking tape. I spent the night stopping imaginary crimes, in between asking for candy. And now you're doing it for real. I bet your parents are really proud of you. I'd like to think they are. Apparently old London isn't as empty as we thought. Gentleman Ghost is raising the dead warriors of this place. We need to capture him in order to put them back to rest. Those swords they're carrying look pretty real. They are. And weapons like those were built to last. So watch yourself. I come pretty well equipped. These warriors haven't fought anyone in over 600 years. Apologies if they're a tad rusty. It's cruel to reanimate the dead like this, Gentleman Ghost. No! What's cruel is to cost someone their life in the first place. Your death wasn't my fault, Craddock. Now turn yourself in and stop all this madness before it goes too far. Oh, my dear Batman. We're just getting warmed up. I'll be seeing you. The area is becoming unstable. Just like your villain, buddy. We need to end this as soon as possible. Gentleman Ghost's destruction is wearing down the foundation of these areas. Even if we capture him, we may not be able to get out of here before the whole place comes down. So let's double time it, kid. The size of this place is incredible. It's like a whole other world down here. I'll have to tell the boys in the Justice Society about this. Dr. Midnight's a real history buff. It's a shame the entire site may become lost again as a result of Craddock's careless actions. The London Archaeological Society would love a discovery like this. People should have more respect for history. Sometimes they treat us old-timers like we're relics. As long as you keep fighting crime, society will appreciate you. Yeah. Boy, those knights sure had a beef with us, didn't they? They're warriors. Fighting is all they know. Without that, they might as well just sink back into the ground. I know the feeling. Don't take it personally. Those weapons of yours are pretty incredible. Say what you will about fancy gadgets and computerized doohickeys. When I'm staring down criminals, nothing gets the job done like the swing of a mace or the throw of a spear. It must get exhausting wielding them. Ha! Ah, not when you're in the shape that I am. Prime of my life, I tell ya! That's great to hear. I hope I'm half the hero you are when I'm your age. Yeah. This really has been enjoyable, gentlemen. But I'm afraid our journey is nearly at its end. Oh, how I will treasure our adventure together when you're both long dead. Some much sooner than others, of course. I can hold my own, punk. Don't worry about me. Tut tut, Batman. Forcing old heroes through new gauntlets. That's not very heroic, is it? I'm fine. Really. Now let's get down there and finish this. The ground is solid, but I may be able to blast through it with my explosives. Use them. We can't let a madman like him get away. Crossing a line, Craddock. By giving these fine gentlemen an opportunity to protect one of their own? Come now, my children. Play with the heroes. Way to go, kid! Do that! Keep up, Hawkman. Where's that legendary speed you're known for? Hey, I'm just watching the rear, Batman. You never know where that top hat wearing ghoul will show up next. Good call. You're one heck of a hero, Batman. All these dead bodies. You think he'd show the dead a little more respect, considering he's one of them. James Craddock doesn't respect anyone but himself. He'd tear the world apart if it gained him anything. I can see that. <laughs> Careful, my avian acquaintance. We wouldn't want you throwing out your back before the grand reveal. Hawkman, are you? I'm fine. 
Got anything in that belt of yours to shut him up? Oh dear, it's getting a bit crass down here. I know when I'm not wanted. Deeper and deeper into the abyss. They should sell tickets to a ride this enjoyable. Journey down into the depths of the underworld. On your left, the remains of the once great Batman. On your right, his rotting, winged friend. You're one to call us rotting, Craddock. Rotting? You should see his face. It's like he fell asleep in the microwave. Ha! I appreciate the invisibility, then. Thanks for sparing us, Ghost. That was uncalled for, Batman. This looks handy. This gentleman ghost of yours reminds me of another villain we had back in my day. The Monocle. You ever hear of him? I think so. He had the craziest collection of eyepieces you could ever imagine. One that shot lasers, one that blinded you. Of course, once you knocked off his eyepiece, he was just another crazy fellow with too much time on his hands. They usually are. The lava's getting thicker. If we head any deeper, the heat may overcome us. Feels like a sweat lodge to me. Good for the old muscles. Just don't fall in. Ah! If I do, would you throw me a towel, kid? Keep up the pace, Hawkman. If I know what Gentleman Ghost is planning, we're in for one serious fight. I've gotta come clean, kid. This whole chase, it's got me beat. Too much more of this and I'll be as dead as that creep we're chasing. But you said you were fine, in the prime of your life. Of course I did. I've got one of my biggest fans here, fighting alongside me. I couldn't disappoint you, son. I didn't want you to see how the years have slowed me down. When I said you were my hero, Hawkman, I didn't just mean physically. Your adventures taught me about courage, determination, and believing in myself. Anyone can beat up a criminal, but it takes a real hero to track them down and never give up. That's what you taught me, and it's what guides me to this day. Thanks, kid. I think I just got my second win. Looks like we're at the end. You know where we're headed? I've got a pretty good idea. It's not the first time that Craddock and I have been down here. So it's personal then? For him it is. In case we don't make it out of this alive, Hawkman. It's been an honor fighting alongside you. The honor's all mine, kid. I had a feeling this is where you were dragging us. Just like old times, eh, Dark Knight? Craddock! Astaroth, it's been too long. You are not welcome here. Ah, uh, but when you see the gift I've brought you, you may change your tune. Gift? I present to you, O oh great Astaroth. In his centurial appearance, that loathsome, manipulative, do-gooding creature of the night known as the Batman. That... man? Oh yes, you know his name. He who made a fool of you. He who cost me my life. I deliver him to you, Astaroth, for the most meager of things. What are your terms? I desire but one thing. That which Batman took from me a hundred years ago. Give me back my life, Demon Astaroth, and the Batman is yours. Shouldn't I ever say in this? It is done. I accept your offer, Craddock. I will burn the Bat creature to ashes, and when he is gone, you shall have your life restored. Excuse me? Fellow with the horns? Who is this impudent bird? I offer him as well, my Dark Lord. Do with him as you like. It seems to me that this is hardly a fair fight. Seeing how you've got a good 50 feet on us? How about fighting someone your own size? <laughs> well, that didn't work. I will enjoy this. It has been centuries since I've had a good fight. Bathe in my flames! Stop throwing that! I burn! My breath burns. 
burns hot. Impossible. Beaten by mere mortals. Craddock, our deal is broken. You will never have your life back. Never! You've ruined everything, Batman! First you cost me my life, and now you've ruined my death! I hope I can take some small pleasure in burying you two alive! Craddock, you coward! Keep your cool, son. The last thing you want is to get buried under your emotions. Literally, in this case. This entire chase has been nothing but a waste of time! We're tracking a dangerous criminal and making the world a better place, Batman. That's heroic. And acting heroic is never a waste of time. Are you okay, kid? You seem to be taking the situation a little personal. Gentleman Ghost is a menace. He needs to be behind bars. And metal bars, of course. That's the only thing that can hold him. No question. Every criminal we capture helps make the streets safer. Is there something about this particular one that's got you riled? I didn't get Craddock killed, even though he blames me for his death. But I know what it's like to lose a life you hold dear. I'm worried that because I understand him in that way, it makes me weaker. No, son. It makes you even stronger. Now come on. Let's get out of here before this place buries us. Watch out for falling rocks. Uh, I don't know if I can keep up with you, kid. I, I got my wings. You go ahead. I'll catch up. Not on your life. A hero never leaves his partner behind. You taught me that, Hawkman. Hey, darn right I did. Way to go, kid. You'd think these dopes would be a little more focused on getting out of here than punching us. They're not really hired for their brains. Go on, get out of here, you numbskulls. The whole place is coming down. Gentlemen Ghost, your plan is foiled. Turn yourself in so we can call it a night. It's fitting that it ends here, don't you think? I won't be coming quietly, Batman. You're a dangerous threat to every villain out there. I'm going to end your life before you cost anyone else theirs. In case you didn't notice, Ghosty, there are two of us and only one of you. Oh, Hawkman, your eyes must be going. Surely you can see that I'm surrounded by friends here. Let's fight, boys! Heroes! Feeling a bit trapped, heroes. Burn for eternity! I will not warn you again! This is the second time you've stolen my mortality from me, Batman. Your own law-breaking is what cost you your life, Gentleman Ghost. All I wanted was another chance. Being a hero isn't just about strength, Batman. It's about strength of character and showing respect, even for your enemies. Come on, let's get you back to Blackgate. <sighs> The jig is up, Cold. You and your cohorts have nowhere left to run. The rogues have no beef with you, Batman. We're only taking back what society owes us. By my count, it's you three that owe society. Ten to twenty years each in Iron Heights Penitentiary. Want me to torch him? Not yet, Heatwave. The rogues don't need Batman's death on our hands. We'd get every nut job in a cape hunting us down. I saw action. What'd I miss? It had to be Gardner. Hey, it's that other Green Lantern. What's that supposed to mean, Flamehead? It means you're a backup hero who should stick to his own jurisdiction. Jurisdiction? Buddy, this whole galaxy is my jurisdiction. And 
Remind me who these guys are again. Captain Cold, Heatwave, and the Weather Wizard. Longtime enemies of the Flash and the last three villains you'd ever want to meet on a frozen mountaintop. Weather Wizard, our discussion here is over. If you wouldn't mind brewing up a storm. You read my mind, Cold! The weather forecast? Windy, with a chance of death. Today's forecast? All heroes die. Pain, stop attacking me. How dare you? How dare you? Pain, stop attacking me. Save me, friends! Heatwave, melt these heroes! Let's heat things up! Ouch! That hurt, ya punk! Hot enough for ya! Burn! Burn! Stop that! Hot enough for ya! Ouch! That hurt, ya punk! Stop that! I'll burn you into ash! Ouch! That hurt, ya punk! They're all yours, Cold. Prepare to die a very cold death. Enough that was cold. Ready for some hot and cold? Enough. The rogues stick together. Sure thing, Cold. You got it, Cold! Nobody beats all three of us! Burn! Burn! Feel my winds! Freeze! Let's see if I melt! That was cold! Enough! How dare you! Miserable heroes! Today's forecast, all heroes die. Pain, stop attacking me. This should slow you down. Feel my winds. I've lost my win. Always great to help, Bats. Give me a call next time you're in trouble. I wasn't in trouble, and you nearly got us killed. Was that? What kind of idiot runs into a battle with three villains he hasn't even researched? Research? Come on. One guy's dressed like an Eskimo, the other looks like a fireman. It doesn't take a genius to know what they're gonna hit us with. There were three of them. Oh, sorry. You know what? I take it back. I'm done saving your butt. I got enough people to save. People that like me. Why do I keep getting teamed up with Guy Gardner? If it isn't the Green Lantern's problem, child, Guy Gardner. Mongol. You're looking awfully incensed. I don't know what that means, so I'm gonna assume that was an insult. Calm down, Gardner. Mongol's in custody now. I'm just escorting him to a science cell. I find it humorous that you were unable to subdue me during our last encounter, Guy. And yet, Batman, without a ring of his own, was. What are you trying to imply, Sunflower? That some heroes don't need jewelry to act tough. 
I'll show you tough! Enough. I couldn't agree more, Batman. Goodbye. What were you thinking? That ain't good. What? You act like it was my fault they escaped. That's because it was. Ah, yeah, that's just your opinion, Bats. Mongo was- Mongo was in my custody, until you decided to break him free to get into a pointless fistfight. Yeah, well, you heard what he said. You're a Green Lantern guy. Start acting like one. What's that supposed to mean? Because of your hot temper, I have to spend the day with you tracking down Mongo, Starro, and the hundreds of starfish he spread across the galaxy. Yeah, fun times, right? <laughs> uh, got one. What's the deal with these things again? They're Starro's parasites. He releases them to take control of his victims. As long as you keep it away from your face, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew that. What I meant was, what's the deal with them being purple and all? Starfish ain't supposed to be purple, right? By my readings, there are 25 starfish on this planet, including the one you just captured. I bet these things taste terrible, huh? They smell like rotten seafood. Try to focus, guy. <laughs> no, I'm focused on how much this thing stinks. Greetings, heroes. Sinestro! Now, Guy, there's no need for that. There's always a need for that. Guy, he's not hostile. Batman's right. Now, I assume you two being here has something to do with these creatures that have invaded my planet? Your planet? You enslaved your own people and made them live in fear. And in turn, we've lived in a society completely devoid of crime and invasions. Until today. Such is the price of order. You abuse the powers of the Green Lantern! And here you are, ready to show my people that Green is, once again, good. I assume this entire debacle was somehow Gardner's fault? You're still a wanted criminal, Sinestro. Don't expect any favors. Fair enough. Just ahead you'll find a passage under the square leading to our prison cells. You're bound to find some more starfish down there. And when you're done cleaning up your mess, please find your way off my rock. I can't believe you let that purple freak off the hook. He's a wanted criminal, just like you said. And right now, he's not posing a threat to anyone. Starro, on the other hand, is unleashing his starfish across the galaxy. We shouldn't have let Sinestro go, that's all I'm saying. Assuming we could take him into custody now, we'd have to haul him back to Oa. And who knows how far Starro's invasion will have spread by then. You're the one who said your jurisdiction was the entire galaxy, guy. The people of Korragar need our help now. So are you all talk, or are you a man of action? I still think he's in on this. Boy, these people live like animals. Look how run down everything is. Korragar is a divided society. There's a huge gap between those with power, such as Sinestro, and those without. That's what you get when your planet's run by a madman. Sinestro is a crazy guy. He's a dictator. He rules his planet without any consideration for free will. Yeah, well, that'd drive me pretty crazy. And since when do superheroes back the bad guys instead of each other? The way you acted back there, I expect your next team up to be the adventures of Batman and Sinestro. I'm not condoning his actions, but we have more pressing matters at hand. You say tomato, I say criminal sympathizer. Once we're done cleaning up your mess, we can start on the rest of the galaxy. Sound good? You're lucky I'm in a good mood, Bats. I don't need check out the ocean view. It's the Asnagreb Sea, Korrigar's largest body of water. Now well, I sure hope that glass is thick. I don't feel like night swimming right now. I appreciate you cleaning up your mess, heroes. And now it's time to take out the garbage. And by garbage, I mean you, five head. Oh, I doubt it. Not if you want to know where Starro was headed next. Where's that, Sinestro? A truce? For now. What? I saw him leaving Korrigar in the direction of the planet Gibble. If you hurry, you might be able to catch him. Come on, guy. Oh, I ain't leaving this lion criminal scum behind. It's trash day, and I'm about to put you out on the curb. If you have any intention of recapturing Starro, guy, then we have to leave right now. <laughs> this ain't the end of this, Sinestro. I'll be back for you later.
I'm sure you will, Guy Gardner, and I'll be ready. What a dump. You sure there's life on this planet? Yes. I mean, aside from us. And all these rocks. Yes, Guy. Gotcha. The sidekick. He has returned in our time of peril. Sidekick? Oh, right. But where is the Great One? Yeah, I'll handle this one, Bats. They're obviously talking about me. That's right, you squishy little... whatever you are. Guy Gardner, the greatest Green Lantern who ever lived, is here to save you. Guy, please. Come on, Bats. Don't be jealous now. Sidekick, who is this green man? And why is his hair cut so... oddly? What'd he say? People of the planet Gibble, we have come to rid you of the star-shaped menace that plagues your world. Please remain calm. Your day of suffering at the tentacles of these foul creatures is at an end. All thanks to the amazing Guy Gardner! That's right, come on, give it up, don't be shy! Lousy gibbles. I don't get these guys. They look like a pair of light bulbs sloshing around in a bag full of slime. They're actually a very technologically advanced race. Their spacecraft and weaponry exceed anything we have on Earth. Yeah, it doesn't change the fact that they look like snot. Hey, I know that guy. How come he gets a statue? He's not half the hero I am. Blue Beetle may be inexperienced, but he comes from a long line of superheroes that have saved the Gibble people on several occasions. Yeah, well, my statue better be pretty huge after I'm done here. I swear, some people got no respect. I know the feeling. These Staros are disgusting. I'm pretty sure they're gumming up the inside of my ring. Again, their release was really your fault, guy. I'll have to take a hose to it when we're done. Hope my ring's waterproof. Hurry, sidekick! We must flee the planet before we are overtaken by the star-shaped threat! That's really not necessary. Frightened little fellas, aren't they? Come on, let's check out their ship! Guy, that's not our priority right now. I think I saw a starfish climb on board, so there! Now it is! Okay, everybody, relax. The heroes are here. No need to panic, but you may want to consider building another statue when this is done. I'd be happy to pose. Guy. What? I don't see Blue Boy here cleaning up this mess. That's because he didn't cause it. Well, not technically. It looks like the Staros have reached the bridge. What bridge? The control room. Help me take care of them before we crash. Oh, yeah, right. But for the record, I was going to suggest that anyway. Hey, Batman, stop me if you heard this one. Stop. What's two feet tall, clear, gooey, and lights up like a Christmas tree? I don't know, guy. <laughs> Neither do I. But I think I just stepped in one. <laughs> It was a rocky landing, but at least no one got hurt. The sidekick and his green man have returned. Right. Now about that statue. Uh, hold on, I'm getting a call. Seriously? It's a distress call, Bats. Somewhere on this planet, another Green Lantern is in trouble. It's Arisia! Quick, help me get this thing off her! Thank you, Guy. Batman. I'm not sure how long I've been out. Not long, according to my readings. You shouldn't experience any permanent damage as a result of this attack. Arisia, what were you doing out here? I came to the planet Gibble on a peacekeeping mission, to provide aid to its inhabitants. The citizens here are good-natured, but frequently targeted by space pirates for what little food and valuables they have. I came here to distribute rations and check in on the injured. That's when Starro showed up. He released an army of his starfish on the Gibble people. We weren't prepared for anything like this. I tried to fight them off, but there were too many of them. The last thing I remember was sending out a distress call, then the two of you arriving and waking me up. We have to help them, Guy. The Gibbles aren't warriors. They can't- We took care of it, Arisia. Don't worry. These little gumwads are fine now. Do you have any idea where Starro was headed after he left this planet? Yes. I targeted his trajectory just before I passed out. Let's see. It looks like he was headed toward Glaciata, the ice planet. That's not far from here. And Guy, Kilowog was supposed to be taking a group of recruits up there today for some training. The grunts? I'd better come with you. Not in your condition, lady. You stay here and I'll take care of it. I am still a lantern, Guy Gardner. What I think Guy means to say is, there are a lot of Gibble people here that could use your help. You're right. Travel safely. May Oa protect you. And thank you both for saving me.
Let's find those Staros and clear out of here. What? No smart remarks. My fellow Lanterns are getting hurt, Batman. There's nothing funny about that. The surface of this planet is like a shell. Nothing can survive out here due to the extremely low temperatures. Yeah, including us. I think my eyeballs are frozen. Any life on this planet exists inside of it, which is probably where the Staros are too. Enough chit-chat. Let's bust this snowball open and find our frozen fish. If they're all frozen like this, then this planet will be a cakewalk. We can probably leave it here for now and come back for it later. Negative. If this thing thaws out, it's going after the first creature it sees. We're not taking any chances. Help me break it open. You got a Green Lantern. What, do they got a water park down here? You don't want to touch this liquid guy. It's 100 degrees below freezing. One touch and you'll get pulled into the freezing depths in less than a second. Save the safety tips, Bats. I'm not the one swinging around on cables, remember? Looks like a dead end. We'll have to break through some of these walls in order to locate the rest of the Staros. But be careful. Any sudden impact could trigger a cave-in. Uh, someone should just take a blowtorch of this whole planet and be done with it. There are several indigenous species of animals living inside these icy walls. You call this living? The starfish ain't the only ones caught in the cold. Not so tough now, are you, dummy? It looks like he's in our way. Time to wake up and take your medicine. And by medicine, I mean a healthy dose of my fist in your face. That's one of those life forms you were talking about. In spite of its size, I'm sure it's more afraid of us than we are of it. I ain't afraid of no ice bugs. Give me the word, Batman, and I'll paint these walls with its guts. I'd rather you didn't. Ah, oh, looks like we found another one. I got a feeling this guy won't be eating us anytime soon. We should probably be more worried about what's eating him. Kilowog! Guy! Hurry up and get these things off of me! Hang on, buddy. Help us on the way. About time some backup showed. Good to see you, guy! I'm just glad you're okay, Kilowog. What? No insults? Who's this poozer and what's he done with my pal Guy Gardner? Guy's had a rough day. Starro escaped the science cells. We've been rounding up his offspring ever since. And it's all my fault. I caused so much trouble this time. I don't deserve to wear this ring. Calm down, buddy. You took an oath, and I expect you to stick by that. But the new recruits! Don't worry about them. They're young, they'll bounce back. Right, newbies? Yes, yes sir. sir! You know, guy, being a Green Lantern ain't just one training session and you're done. It's something you work at your whole life. And what you learn from your mistakes makes you an even stronger lantern. I guess. Oh, snap him out of it, will you, Batman? You know what these rings run on. Guy, it looks like we have one more Starro left. Need any help? I was just getting warmed up when you two showed. Tend to your troops, Kilowog. We can take it from here. Suit yourself. Hey, did I say take five on your feet, you poosers? Your lanterns now, so start acting like it! Don't tell me this little guy did all that. We've caused a lot of structural damage since we've been here. We better get out of these tunnels before they collapse. What about Kilowog and the newbies? Already gone. My scans aren't picking up any warm-blooded life. Then let's ditch this snow cone. I don't see anything. What are we looking for? Starro, that huge purple starfish with the angry eye. Sorry, guess I didn't get a good look. Picture these starfish we've been collecting, only a thousand times larger. Gotcha. You sure this is where the trail led? There are no more signs of Starro's offspring. It stands to reason he'd be nearby. And probably not too happy about us rounding up all his little buddies either. Judging by his expression, I'd say you were right on the money, guy. All right, seafood platter, it's go time.
I'm never eating seafood again. Let's get Starro back to his science cell. This is one fish that's too big for my ring, Batman. HQ sending a few lanterns our way to help bring him back. Good. In the meantime, let's... Hold on, Bats. I'm getting a transmission. Say again? What? No. It can't be. What is it? I know where Mongol is. But it ain't good. Come on. Mogo, the living planet. The biggest Green Lantern in the entire core. And the most important. It's Mogo that sends out our rings and recruits new core members. Then we know why Mongol's here. That's why Mogo contacted me. He's been unable to drive Mongol away and needs our help. A message from Mogo. He says that Mongol just breached his surface. He must be after Mogo's battery. We gotta stop him before he reaches it. Lead the way, guy. Time to lay the smack down on that overgrown banana head. So if Mogo controls the ring assignments, what happens if he's destroyed? No more Green Lantern Corps. Without Mogo, any unassigned rings would just wander the galaxy. And without the core? Pretty much a universe in chaos. I lose something too if Mogo's destroyed. What's that? A great friend. It's Mogo again. He says Mongol's already halfway to his core. We need to find where Mongol broke through and stop him before he reaches Mogo's battery. Man, I really screwed up this time, didn't I? I mean, sure, it's not like I haven't acted dumb before. There was a time I convinced North that his tail was an alien and he spent all day chasing it. Or the time I wrote Blast Me on a sign and stuck it on Hal Jordan's back, but nothing like this. Not Mogo. Not the core. Keep it together, Gardner. Like Kilowog said, that ring of yours runs on pure willpower. If you give up now, then the core really is done for. Right, Batman. I just don't know if I got it in me anymore. Find it. Every hero makes mistakes, guy. Yeah, but not me. Not a Green Lantern. I was picked out of everyone else on Earth because my will was the strongest. Mogo chose me. And now Mongol's gonna destroy him because I can't deal with my anger! So you learn from your mistakes, and in the end it makes you an even stronger hero. You don't get it, Batman. I'm a Green Lantern. I don't get to make mistakes. We're the best the galaxy has to offer. So prove it. More wreckage. We must be getting close. Looks like you'll get your revenge after all. Revenge? This isn't about me anymore, Batman. This is about the core. You really believe that guy? Absolutely. Then stop your pouting and show me what a Green Lantern is all about. Here's where Mongol broke through Mogo's surface. We still have time, guy. I hope so. You go ahead. I'll follow behind you. You picked a terrible time to lose that ego of yours, guy. Guy finally seems to understand the consequences of his actions. But unless he gets his confidence back, we'll never be able to defeat Mongol. I need to find a way to snap him out of it. It's Mogo. He said Mongol's just ahead. It's hard to read, though. My ring isn't getting much power. You've got to get your will back, Guy. Mogo needs you. The core needs you. And I need you, partner. I don't know. I get so angry. I'll tell you what I do know. That of all the stubborn, strong-minded people on Earth, the core chose you. Mogo didn't send a ring to me, or Superman, or Wonder Woman. He sent one to Guy Gardner, because Guy Gardner has what it takes to be a Green Lantern. Because Guy Gardner is the real deal. You think so? I know so. Now it's time to man up and teach Mongol that if he messes with one lantern... He messes with all of us. Thanks, Bats. We're at the core. Mongols already broken through. We're too late. Not yet. Hurry. Oh, nice of you to drop by, Batman. And I see you brought your bumbling sidekick as well. Care for a rematch, guy? Or did you just come to watch as I tear apart everything you hold dear? Come on, guy. Now's your moment. You know I can't control myself, Batman. One more insult from Mongol, and I'll be body slamming both of us into Mogo's battery. Controlling your anger isn't about refusing to fight, guy. It's about thinking before you act and knowing when to attack. What an inspiring pep talk. Now, let's see if your monkeys learned any new tricks. The only monkey I see here, Mongol, is yellow. 
and I'm about to prove just how yellow you are. <laughs> Do your best, Earthman. It's time to tear you apart, Gardner. Fight me, you coward! Be a man, God! Stop doing that! Way to keep your cool, guy. That's nothing. I just let Sunshine here do all the fighting. The poor kid really tuckered himself out. Kid! Ooh, baby, want a bottle? A bottle? Gardner, I am not some child! They're so cute at this age, ain't they? Come on. Let's get this bumblebee back to the science cells. A joke? From the world's greatest detective? Oh, man. The boys back on Oa are never gonna believe this one. Not so chatty anymore, eh, Lemonhead? I'm impressed, Guy. You finally learned that a hero's greatest weapon is his mind. Yeah, well, this worked pretty well, too. <laughs>